few hours ago I posted a video um, of this uh, Thunder Tiger 15 test run, it's an old Series 3. Um, but I've now pulled that video, there was a couple of comments on there that said that the prop was, was too big, it was over propped. And it kind of set me thinking, I, I thought I'd put the appropriate prop on for the manual. Um, and I realised, checking through, that the prop that I put on wasn't a 9x6, it was an 8x6. Um, and so I pulled the video and thought I'd add this little bit on the front because I really don't want to uh, be misleading people um, as to you know prop size and, and what engines can run. It's just not appropriate. So I apologise for that. And um, if you saw the video and you're wondering why it's back up again, that's the reason. Um, I've uh, amended the, uh, the prop size just with a bit of text in the video uh, and in the text. So um, take a look at the video now again and like I say, I'm, I apologise for that. And just to say, I really appreciate everybody's support of my channel and all the comments and likes that I get. It's, it's really good and, and thanks very much and there's, there's many much more to come. Thanks. Recently picked up this lovely old Thunder Tiger engine. Um, it was going for next to nothing and uh, I just couldn't refuse it. I, I love these old retro engines. I love the look of them, the style and the feel of them. Um, and some of them run really well. Um, these early Thunder Tigers, this is a, a Series 3 um, and here it's got model 7703. Um, I mean, this, this engine was introduced in 1977-1978 um, and it was closely modelled on the, on the Enya uh, 15 Series 3 um, and I believe the carb is, a, is kind of a copy of a, an OS Max 15 carb. Um, I mean, Thunder Tiger went on to produce some, in my mind anyway, brilliant engines in the late 90s and the... Um, uh, the 2000s with the, the Thunder Tiger Pros, um, you know, really, really good. And I, I've got a few that, that run absolutely lovely. These, I suspect they're not quite as good. Um, these were very cheap at the time. Um, and in saying that, they actually filled a niche in the market because they were a, a third the price of uh, the equivalent sized OS or, or, or Enya engines. So, you know, the, they probably worked fine at the time and, and like I say, filled, filled a niche. Obviously, they weren't going to be as good as, as some of the, the, the top engines at the time. Um, but I couldn't resist this. I thought it was, it was worth getting and just... just giving it a whirl. It's, um, it's an old design, it's cross-flow scavenging, um, it's got a flat top piston uh, with a baffle, it's um, uh, a cast iron pistol in a steel liner, uh, I think it's steel liner anyway, and um, so uh, one thing to note with this, I took the head off and had a look inside, and the, these and a lot of the other smaller engines take a short reach plug. Um, somebody had pulled a long reach plug in and it had just kept been catching the top of the baffle. Um, it hadn't done any damage, um, but it's just something to be aware of. So the engine and also the muffler, muffler this is TT202. Um, again, I love these straight through retro designs. Okay, not quite as practical um, because they're more likely to throw oil straight back onto your um, onto your plane better with a, a, a deflector. It's interesting, This it's got the, the standard um, nipple on here for the, the, uh, the tank pressure feed, but it's also got a, a separate um, uh, hole here. It's not really a nipple. If you unscrew that, it's got a tube uh, that goes in about half an inch, and I believe this is where you'd put a syringe up to that with a bit of fuel, pump it in, and it lines up directly with the, the open uh, exhaust port and you pre-prime your engine. I, I, I'd never seen that before, but I'm fairly sure um, that that's, uh, that's what that's for. So anyway, I'm gonna get this into my, uh, into my stand and uh, give it a whirl and see how it runs. Okay, well here we are. I've got the engine stand set up and my uh, Thunder Tiger 15 ready to see how it goes. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to be travelling to the RC field today. Probably really quiet there, but with the current 
uh, partial lockdown and travel restrictions, I think it's wise to stay at home. So I'm in a corner of my backyard here. So we'll see how this goes, get it clamped into the stand. Um, it's running a 9x6 master air screw prop and I've got a 7% nitro mix uh, which has got 20% uh, oil, 50-50 castor and synthetic. So get this clamped down and make some noise. was fairly mixed results. Um, at the top end when it was running it ran lovely, it turned that 9x6 prop really well, what was it, nearly 12,000 RPM or touching 12,000 RPM at times, uh, which was great. Um, just couldn't get the idle right, I spent ages messing about with it, I'll, I'll edit a lot of it out, um, but essentially if you had the air bleed set right, uh, the transition from what was kind of almost an idle was fine, which was sort of 5,000 RPM, it would fly up to um, up to maximum revs, but you just couldn't get that idle down to a, something that you could use, something that was um, viable really. Um, to get the RPM down I had to close the air bleed right down to reduce the amount of, of um, air going into the carb. Um, but that obviously richened it up, so you opened it up and there was a big splutter. Um, I think the carbs probably just really worn, let, letting a lot of air in around the sides of the barrel. Um, it's, it's secure actually in the, uh, in the housing itself, so I don't think it's a leak uh, from where the carbs fitted. I think it's probably just the barrel, which does have quite a, a lot of slop in it. But I enjoy running that, but I don't think I'll be putting it in one of my planes. <laughs>